Welcome to PF International for the final round of the Tuto Money Super 1 British Karting Championships. It's Judgment Day when we find out whose names will be added to the Super 1 Roll of Honour in 2018. Hey guys, Kai Puccini here reporting for TDI Media. First race up today is the Ayami Cadet Final. Still three drivers in with a chance of winning the championship. Spoke to them all earlier. Let's see what they said. Joining me first is Will McIntyre. So Will, you've had a few problems with you, especially at GYG. Do you think you can pull it back? Yes, definitely. With all the support from the teammates and everybody, I think I, this is the round that I can really bring it back and hopefully win a championship. So do you think you're going to need support from your teammates or do you think you can do it by yourself? I think I will definitely need support from my teammates because if we're in the races, we need to push together and get away from Arvid. And, yeah, hopefully some of the teammates at the back can hold Arvid back so he can lose a few points. Uh, we've got to see how it goes for the final. And it's can miracles happen? I think I'm just going to have to push and do my very best. I'm going to try and win every race, but that's I, I'm only going to do what I can do. And obviously, if it doesn't uh, happen, then I'm just going to be gracious in defeat. Let's assume miracles don't happen. Are you going to push Harvard? Are you going to play the team game? I think so. I think I want uh, the team to do well. I think um, Harvard has a really good chance of winning. So yeah, I will. I will be supporting Harvard with it. Coming into the final round of the championship, in the lead of the championship on drop scores, what do you think it's going to take to win it? Uh, I need to be consistent. I need to have a good couple of results today and tomorrow. And I need to try and beat Will. Um, but I also need to watch out for Max, because he's quite close. Um, so, yeah. With all sorts of malarkey going on in heats one and two affected Max Dodds and Arvid Lindblad. That left Will McIntyre here in the championship league going into the pre-final. But as you can see, he ended up pushed up the bank. And the spectacle that we hoped for in the final here is not going to happen. Arvid Lindblad will be the champion. Lewis Werrell spun himself out on the formation lap. I was speaking to Lewis earlier. He was hoping for a top ten finish today. He's going to have it all to do from the back of the grid. Some say I am the honeycomb centre of the Malteser, but Jake Sanson is the chocolate. Here he is. Well, with all the implications coming into this one for the championship, it's already been decided coming into this second final. You can see Dodson Carr on the front row from Keeble and Lindblad, who is now secure as the champion. Unfortunately for Will McIntyre, who starts back on the sixth row alongside MJ Canini. Freddie Slater starting right at the back after retiring from the earlier final. So this is going to be basically a race for pride. Everybody knows it's already been settled. Arvid Lindblad is already secure as the Ayami Cadet champion. So now it's just one final blast around the 2018 
2018 Championship Circuit. Here we go down the main straight and it is a clean start straight away. No problem at all for Max Dodds as they charge in the first corner. Great start from Maximus Hall and from Luke Watts. They've charged through into third and fourth position already and there's contact again. We've had this every single race in the Army Cadets this weekend and two more have been spat out to the scenery. Every single heat has yet to produce a clean start. It's always been a little bit fisticuffish but Maxwell Dodds is your leader and it's Charlie Rippin. That's such a shame. He has been the leading rookie most of this weekend. So Charlie Rippin, unfortunately, that his uh, his race comes to an end. He was fourth in one of the earlier races this weekend, which is amazing in this field. Freddie Slater, he started dead last. He's now in the top 12. That's amazing. He's got past 13 of them already. So they come through the S's. Up towards Bobby Game Corner, Maxwell Dodds may get a little bit of support here. Maximus Hall in third position, fourth place, that is Luke Watts. Charlie Rippin being escorted out of the car. He can't quite believe his season's over. He's had an amazing weekend, and I have a feeling you're going to hear the name Charlie Rippin a lot in 2019. That boy's got speed. So through they come. Who is that in fifth position? That looks like Will McIntyre. So he's made up a lot of places as well. So he's there in fifth position in front of Vinnie Phillips. Then it's Oliver Wright, Pineapple as he's known. Yellow flags provisionally waved there and then suddenly withdrawn because, of course, we had that little incident with Charlie Rippin. There's Harley Keeble in second position. Now, there was a bit of an incident in the previous race where it looked to me as though Keeble and McIntyre connected. It's been a very unfortunate weekend for the championship contenders because Dodds got uh, into a bit of a scrap in the earlier heat and he got basically spat out to the scenery. Similar story for Lindblad in one of the races. Similar story for McIntyre. So all three of them have had difficult weekends. And that means that in terms of championship points, not a lot can change as now we've had McIntyre move into fourth place past Luke Watts. One thing I do want to say, though, is that there's been a lot of drivers being spat out to the scenery in different incidents, and obviously there's been a lot of suspicion about those particular incidents. But one thing I do want to say is that the mark of amazing professionalism from these youngsters they are still good mates i went with them last night we had a massive football match out behind the paddock it was amazing they're all still good mates they love racing each other and i have to say the race and respect the msa are pushing i think the drivers could teach the parents a thing or two about that under the bridge they fly into turn three once again harley keeble right in behind his teammate max dodds maximus hall the gladiator is rolling up his sleeves and trying to make a move or two of his own he's there in third position great work again this weekend for Maximus Hall. He really is starting to show himself with an awful lot of flair this season. I have a feeling he could be a dark horse for next year's title. As up the inside, McIntyre makes the move for third position. Good move there from Will as they go down towards turn seven into the hairpin. Amazing pictures yet again from the drone capturing the action over at the top of the circuit as they come now towards the S's. I very nearly rolled it here in an arrive and drive cart a few years ago. It is not easy to get it right. They come off the curbs and up towards Bobby Game Corner. Here comes Will McIntyre having a little bit of a look for Harley Keeble, but not going to make the move just yet. And I have to say, McIntyre has been absolutely brilliant all weekend. He had a genuine chance to become champion earlier in the weekend. It all came undone for him in the pre-final. Had he been in the top three, he would still very much be in the hunt for the title, but he has taken it with such grace, such humility, and he's done it in a very, very auspicious style. This kid's definitely a star of the future and he's been absolutely brilliant. A very admirable uh, candor to him all weekend. He's held himself very, very well under the circumstances. Yeah, I've said before, Jake, that it's not just what you do on the track, it's how you conduct yourself off the track a lot of the time. Uh, I will say we can't release any information at the moment, but we've got a Formula One team here this weekend looking at the future of British motorsport and... Uh, for the 10 to 13 year olds as that's a move by McIntyre up into second place. The 10 to 13 year olds in this paddock, they're being watched all the time, not, ju not just here on YouTube. In these videos, the uh, uh, summary of what went on at the weekend, the uh, races in final two, but also how they conduct themselves around the paddock, that is being noticed. Absolutely, so the driver's obviously doing a fantastic job all weekend. I can't say a bad word about one of the youngsters in this field. They've done an absolutely amazing job to carry themselves with the... Uh, 
all of the right uh, stuff, as it were. And up the inside, here comes uh, Will McIntyre with support from Harley Keeble. So they both go through in a one and two. Keep an eye behind them because Freddie Slater is over to ninth as Keeble makes the move for the lead. Gets there. He's going to get some challenge from behind as Max Dodds is going to come through into second place. Good work there. Maximus Hall tried to get himself into fourth position. Vinnie Phillips has got back past Luke Watts. So the six of them are battling away as Arvid Lindblad is now the fastest man on track, having gone all the way down to the back of the field initially. He is now fighting his way forward. Let's not forget, Lindblad was in the top 12. He's had a difficult start to the race, but now he's charging his way through as well as McIntyre holds to cover the inside. Maximus Hall's through past Max Dodds as well. So there is a lot of chopping and changing for position as up the inside again. A good move there from Vinnie Phillips to get into fourth position in front of Harley Keeble. Uh, oh, sorry, that uh, in front of Max Dodds, I should say, because Keeble is still leading the race. And now Luke Watts makes the move on Max Dodds. He's into fifth position. I have to say, Luke Watts, he's been a very tough uh, opponent all season long for these guys. And a lot of the time, he has been the best of the rest. He's put on a really good show here, Luke Watts, all season. I really want to see him continue this sort of development. As up the inside, McIntyre and Maximus Hall make the bid on Harley Keeble. Could this be the best chance yet this season of Maximus Hall to get a victory? Absolutely, it is his best chance, but Keeble goes back down the inside and Keeble back through two second, drops the Gladiator back to third. Vinny Phillips there in fourth, as you say, Jake. This is probably the best we've seen from Vinny all season. Looks like another change for second. That is Maximus Hall back on the inside to second position. Meanwhile, further back, Freddie Slate has got up to seventh. He's got past his teammate Aidan Neat. And here again comes Keeble for a chance to get back through. So Keeble and... Uh, Hall having an amazing tussle and they very nearly come to blows. That's given McIntyre a brilliant lead as they come through the S's up towards Bobby Game Corner through the right hander. Once again, they will swing into the Mike Wilson complex named after the most successful driver in the history of the FIA Karting World Championships. Of course, won six titles in his day. And as they come into the final chicane through the left, through the right. We're picking up the details of Luke Watts there, one of the Young Racing Driver Academy racers. He is in the top four now, hoping to get onto the podium his last race of the season as they charge through under the Litchfield Bridge once again. McIntyre, Keeble, Vinnie Phillips now up to third. Luke Watts is there in fourth position. Watch out, there goes Slater at the inside of Hall and Dodds. Brilliant from Freddie Slater. My goodness, he is motivated and fired up for this one. I'm trying to remember the last time anybody came from the back of the field to the front. And that was probably Kian Jewis a few years ago, who, of course, is uh, just on the same time as this, about to clinch the British F4 Championship for 2018 at Brands Hatch. Up the inside goes Vinny Phillips, gets in a second place on Keeble. Watts is trying to get through as well in the third. And watch out, boys. Freddie C. A. Slater's on the tail, but Vinny Phillips driving a brilliant race. This is easily Vinny's best performance of the season. And isn't it amazing how several of the rookies in these big teams, they spend a long time learning from the guys who have been there a year or two, established, running at the front, and suddenly they find their A game. Yeah, Harry Burgoyne Jr. making up places as well in the midfield. He's currently eighth at the moment. Can he move forward? forward as you say Jake this is uh, where the kids really do learn their trade they start as novices in this class uh, they look up to these drivers the likes of uh, McIntyre uh, Slater and Arvid Lindblad the younger drivers in the field will look to them as they will be almost if not their heroes they'll be certainly looking up to them thinking that's where I want to be in two or three years time if I'm still in this class Brandon Carr the leading rookie now in ninth place Rookies, of course, always competing for their own winner's trophy, as are the privateers. Ella Stevens leads that battle, somebody you know quite well from Birrell Art, Jake. Uh, this is where they all learn their trade, the uh, cadet drivers, and it is a fantastic class. But for Slater there... Oh, no contact! Sorry, contact! That was Aidan Neat. Unfortunately, Maximus Hall got into him there. Let's have another look at it. So Maximus Hall is having a bit of a, a run in there with... Uh, Oliver Wright, he's chasing him down. Maximus Hall decided there's enough space to go for the move, and there is plenty of space to go for the move. That's a perfect overtake. Unfortunately for him, Aidan Neat was making the same move on Brandon Carr, and Maximus Hall did not expect him to pull across so late to make the overtake. So unfortunately, Aidan Neat going for the move. Maximus Hall had nowhere to go, so accidentally nudged him into a spin. Completely not Maximus's fault at all. But unfortunately, the result is still the same. That's a real shame for both of them, particularly for Aidan Neat, who took a victory, of course, last time out. In fact, took two wins, one in a heat, one in a final, last time out at Glanagors Park. And the confidence from that is going to be sky high. You can bet your bottom dollar. Aidan Neat, I'm going to put it here, 
potential favourite to win the championship next year. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he's still in cadets or moving up to juniors and talking about oh, moving up. Oh, that's, that's a third to first. Move. Look at that from Keeble. He got past both of them and now Phillips has got enough space to get through. And look who's joined the party. Freddie Slater's in the mix. Yeah, so McIntyre in third, I Slater's was, fourth. I was just saying before that Freddie Slater was putting in an amazing, amazing performance from uh, well look down on the field, the back well of the field, the gets outside. third. He's not happy with third, though. He's going for the win here, no doubt about it. I've never seen a cadet go around the outside in the S's there of anybody, let alone somebody as strong as Will McIntyre. Freddie Slater does not do things by halves. They all know the championship is settled, of course, so they don't need to play any team games. Nobody needs to help anybody in this final race of the year. They all want to win. It's all for one and more for me. That's what it is, the attitude of the moment. Are we looking at a new winner in the cadet class, Jake? I can tell you Vinnie Phillips has never won, never even got close really to winning a grand final. Oh. Slater goes up the inside of a second and gets it. I think he was listening. <laughs> he said, I don't think he is, mate. I think I'm going to win this. Yeah, he's, th he's currently gone from 25th to second. That is an incredible performance so far. But uh, Vinnie Phillips out front. We do like to see the different winners as McIntyre goes back in the third, drops uh, Keeble back to fourth place. Amazing race so far. Dodds up the inside of Keeble. And Burgoy Jr. get the move on Keeble. It's chopping and changing all the time here. Everybody wants to bow out on a high. This is a fantastic race. The first race of the season this year, by the way, guys, has had over, well, it's probably 325,000 views by now. Just that one cadet race. It's the biggest race in the history of the sport in terms of views, apart from, obviously, the likes of Lewis Hamilton when he was racing. That will get over a million views. But in terms of races that are happening in this era, that is the biggest number of views in the history of the sport. Here comes Slater right in behind Vinnie Phillips. He's setting him up now. Slater amazingly has gone from the back of the field to second, but I think he's not going to settle for it as he goes up the inside of his teammate, Vinnie Phillips, and leads over the Litchfield Bridge. Absolutely incredible. Freddie Slater started last, is now in first, and genuinely has a chance to clean up on the circuit where he took victory at the very first round of the championship, if you remember. It's been a very difficult road for Freddie since then as Harry Jr. Burgoyne is running out of road, battling his own teammate Harley Keeble. There's no team orders now, the championship's settled. Do what you like, and Freddie Slater leading. Look at McIntyre trying to defend an absolute pack of dogs behind him. He's got an Oliver Rowland Motorsport squabble going on behind his Dodds. He's trying to get up on the inside of McIntyre. Keeble gets plenty of curb and absolutely full wide nearly as they come up to Bobby Game Corner. Watts manages to get up the inside there. I think Harry Jr. Burgoyne is going to get squeezed by Maximus Hall as he goes through nice job there from Maximus and Harry Jr. Burgoyne despite his really strong weekend unfortunately got a little caught out that's Arvid Lindblad in the middle of all that what a comeback from him as we go into the last lap absolutely brilliant so now Phillips has one more lap to try and get past Freddie Slater he's been learning from him all season this is brave from Vinny round the outside but he realized there it's not gonna happen not at that corner anyway McIntyre third in front of Dodds in fourth then it is, I think that's Harry Jr. Burgoyne as Maximus Hall makes another big lunge to dive up the inside there of, I think, Harley Keeble. Freddie Slater just keeping the door firmly shut there. Further back, we've got some battles going on. That is Jack Younger trying to get his way on the inside of MJ Canini. He sold him an absolute dummy there. Very nicely done as the two teammates from Strawberry Racing go to battle. But look at this, Freddie Slater really having to work very hard indeed to keep Vince Phillips at bay. He's practically flirting with that white line on the inside line at every turn. And again, just trying to keep the cart as wide as possible. There's nothing to lose now. He's going everywhere that Vinnie Phillips goes. That was beautiful from Freddie Slater. Really kept him at bay. And now McIntyre makes the lunge on Phillips. Is there going to be a podium for Vinny? Yes, there is. He hangs on in front of Max Dodds. That could so easily have fallen away from him. But it's going to be a victory from last to first. Vinny Phillips is going to have to wait for his first win. Freddie Slater's gone from the back to the front. McIntyre second. Phillips third. It's a Fusion Motorsport podium lockout. But what a way to finish the season in what has been one of the most competitive fields in British karting at Army Cadet level. Slater from McIntyre and Phillips. Dodds in fourth position. Front bearing penalties unfortunately mean that Leo Robinson drops out of the top 12. The leading rookie is Brandon Carr in 10th. Ella Stevens comes home as the leading privateer again. But Slater last to first. I don't really have any decent words to give other than sensational, Freddie. From last place to first, that must be really satisfying. Uh, yeah, it was a good race. Um, I, 
I was a bit surprised, but um, I just pushed as hard as I could, and I, I was like in fifth in half at the half to go of the race and then we got into the lead and then we defended on the last lap to Vinny Phillips and he and he did a really good job and um, we managed to take the win which is really good from last place. Well they only say that you're as good as your last race so to go from last to first you're going to have to live up to that every time next year. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic well done Freddie. Thank you. Great way to end the season. Arvid Lindblad wins the title by just five points to Will McIntyre. Maxwell Dodds is 30 ahead of Freddie Slater with Aidan Neat in fifth. The Honda Cadet season finale will be up next in part two.